Okay, welcome back. We're doing another section of Course 1, Lesson 3, Japanese from Zero, Book 1, or Course 1 if you are online. And we are going to be talking about particle ga. Um, and also, you do need to remember, you do need to know kakiku keko and gagiku keko, which is the prior uh, writing lesson because this is the progressive version of the book. Okay, uh, let's talk about this particle ga. Ga is a subject marker. Okay, uh, and I want to apologize for the entire Japanese language at this point because we already know wa, the topic marker. Let's get there right there. We know wa, the topic marker, and we know now we're going to learn ga, the subject marker. And if you are a an honest person, you're thinking, what's the difference between a topic and a subject? Because what's the topic of this lecture? What's the subject of this lecture? To me, they sound exactly like the same thing. And this honestly is an extremely confusing thing when you first learn Japanese. The number one question that you always get when you're teaching Japanese is, when do I use wa and when do I use ga? I'm going to clear it up as much as I can, and the way we're going to do it is in stages, okay? As we learn Japanese, I will give you rules that help you understand when to use wa and ga. The reality is you cannot learn them all at once because your Japanese level isn't high enough to apply what you're learning. For example, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you what a topic is, and I'm going to explain what a subject is, and I think you'll still be confused, okay? It, it might help you, though, because it, it kind of helped me put it in my head when I looked it up uh, earlier today. I never actually looked up what a topic and a subject was. Up until now, I've only really taught when to use wa and ga, but I thought, well, you know, maybe if we, we looked it up. So I looked it up, and I found a couple websites, and I came up with this uh, solution. So wa marks the topic, and the topic is the thing that you're going to talk about. It's plainly that, the thing you're going to talk about. Although later on, I will show you that you can use wa in other ways, and this is where it gets complicated. There are rules for when to use wa and ga, but they flip sometimes, okay? So it really is an experience thing. But right now, we just want to know, hey, I'm going to talk about this thing, and you're going to mark that with wa. Ga, ga marks who or what verbs. Who is verbing, right? Who is verbed? Who got verbed? or what got verbed, or what verbed, right? It's the thing that does the action or that receives the result of the action. Or it's something that is being described. And by default, that means anything that's using an adjective. Anything that you, if you say, ah, oh, these scissors are blue, after scissors, there would be a ga. Uh, this is a long ruler. Ruler ga long des is what it would be. The ga would be there because by default, we're going to use ga when we're using adjectives. So first rule right away is when you're using adjectives, the thing that you're describing is marked with ga. Okay? But we're not at that level yet. This is really important to know. Okay? We are not at the level to really think about all we can do with wa and ga. There is actually a book written about Wanga, completely about Wanga. I don't know where I saw it, but there was a bunch of little books about that big that I saw one time in Tokyo, maybe 12 years ago. And I thought, wow, wow there's a book written about Wanga. That's how crazy it is. But we can, we can make it easy by just relaxing. And I'll give you one piece of advice or one piece of thing that will make you feel good about it. Japanese people switch these up all the time. And sometimes they even drop them from the sentence. You cannot do that yet. Not until you get better at Japanese, okay? Until you get good in Japanese, don't break the rules. Try to keep your rules straight, or else you'll develop very bad habits. So let's learn one rule at a time. Uh, here's the very first rule. And this is a rule that can never be broken. This rule is set in stone. You can never do what I'm getting ready to tell you. To do. This rule is perfect. Wa can never come directly after a question word. Ever, never. If you have a question word and the next particle is wa, you're wrong. You screwed up. You can never use wa directly after a question word. Now that doesn't mean, this sometimes confuses people, they think that if there is a wa in a sentence with a question word, it's wrong. That is not true. What I'm saying is, if you have wa directly after nani, you're you're wrong. 
It can never be nani wa. It's hard for me to even say it's so wrong. And there will be sentences that you think, and there are sentences that you start with a, a, a question word, which we'll talk about in a bit. But in English, we do it all the time. We say, well, what is this? We Think about it. We say, what is this in English? And if you're not mentally focused on how Japanese works, you want to say nani first, right? You might want to say, nani wa kore? That's wrong, because you have to say, kore wa nan desu ka? Remember that? It's speaking of this, what is it? It's reversed. A lot of times, if you just reverse the sentence logic, you're going to get the Japanese sentence correct. But mentally, you're thinking, nani wa? But it needs to be, nani ka? Which we'll show you in a second. You also couldn't have dare wa. Like, like later on when you learn verbs, you're going to say, well, who, who came? Who came to the party? Okay, and that's dare ga kimashita ka, which we'll get to. It's never dare wa, though. It cannot be. So these are what are correct. It has to be nani ga and dare ga. Okay? Whew. Now, here's another sort of a soft rule, but it's a very good rule. It's a good rule of thumb. Conversations mostly... Do not start with a ga. In other words, there's not going to be a... If your sentence is... Your first sentence in a conversation has a ga in it and you haven't been talking with somebody or there's not a known topic that's been introduced, you normally don't use ga right away. You normally use a wa. Because what does wa do? Wa says, this is what we're going to talk about. And then you're going to do something with ga after that. Another way to think about it is... Uh, I don't have this in the lesson... But I just thought about this right now. Ga is the secondary topic marker. Think about it that way. You start with a wa and you eventually get to a ga. And when you learn more Japanese, that will make sense. Ga is also used for emphasis. This is a very important one. Okay. Now, this is the, the first time where we're going to show you how a wa changes into a ga. And this is what makes wa ga a little bit fun. Uh... So let's look at this guy. I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to ask him, Are you Tanaka-san? So I'm going to say to him, Tanaka-san desu ka? I might say, Sumimasen, excuse me, Sumimasen, Tanaka-san desu ka? Excuse me, are you Tanaka? And he's going to say, Iie, kare ga Tanaka-san desu. Kare ga, not kare wa. Because we, have already started our conversation and he's emphasizing that I am not Tanaka no he is Tanaka no he, no, no, he's Tanaka Ie, kare ga Tanaka -san desu. and that's when ga must be used okay so those are maybe three rules I think that we talked about not putting it in front or immediately after a question word uh, using it for emphasis and knowing that typically it doesn't start right in the beginning of a conversation okay hopefully that helps uh as we do more lessons wan ga usage will start to get easier but in the end if you screw up wan ga the meaning of your sentence is not going to change enough to where the japanese person doesn't understand you at a minimum they will change at the, at the maximum actually they will just say wa sounds more natural there and they won't know why most japanese people won't know why uh, this is your challenge go up on one of those chat applications like Lang8 or Hello Talk or one of those and ask a Japanese person say, can you please explain to me the difference between wa and ga? And they will not know. And if they do, they teach Japanese or they've really thought about it or they've been asked it before and they've researched it. Most people will not know. Your casual friend will not. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all on lesson four where we talk about, yay, colors and adjectives. I can't wait for it. It's going to be fun. See you then. Tell